We're going to have a look at the Elliott 903. It's a machine that we did have a very quick look at when we did our last video here and when we had a look around generally at the museum. But what we're going to do now is actually turn it on, uh, have a closer look at it, see what it does and talk about how, how useful it is to us here at the museum. Um, because the reason why I like this machine so much is because it's, it's from 1966 and it's pretty much the earliest machine in the museum that we can still have up and running and reprogramming it just as it was then. We do have some older kit around here as well, but for the most part, uh, we don't quite have the expertise yet to get it back up and running. So uh, they're kind of inanimate objects. But this particular machine we have great fun with. We're going to turn it on. We're going to see what it does. Um, so I think we'll go straight into that. I heard a big noise when you started up. What, what was that? Uh, well, we have fans kicking normally, um, but the, the really big noise that sounds like a, a motor revving is coming from, if I just move these things around, it's coming from in here, which is the punch tape printer. Because we're going to load new programs on this uh, using punch tape, and uh, this is the original printer with it, of course, so you're just running out uh, blank tape here, punching the new program in. Um, which is also another fun thing that I like explaining to uh, school kids when we have in, that this is exactly the same as copy pasting a file onto a CD. It's just a way of uh, putting a new program onto a portable storage medium. Now we're cheating a little bit with this computer. Originally it would have been uh, running with a teleprinter. We're, we've got a VDU screen here because uh, it keeps the running costs a little bit lower. So that's not quite authentic, but all the actual workings of the hardware is exactly as it was. So it should all be set up and ready to run the program. And there we are. So what are we going to see then? Well, this one is, at the moment, it's not playing the most mathematically advanced program in the world. It's playing noughts and crosses for us. This was actually written in 2013, this program. So again, not quite uh, authentic to the time, but of course the hardware is still as original as it ever was. Although we have some people who say we should do more serious computing applications with these machines, and we totally agree with that, we do do some more serious stuff. We find that for guided tours with school groups and so on, it's really good just to have little fun distractions they can more immediately engage with. Um, alongside the kind of more serious number crunching stuff. So um, on this one, we're going to play a little game of noughts and crosses. We'll set it off. The computer's going to decide where to move. Sure enough, it's going to take the classic gambit of going right in the middle, which now means that it, it's impossible to win the game. Um, and we can choose where to go at this point. So I'm going to go in the bottom left corner down there. Now, although it is impossible to beat the machine at this game, uh, we have lots and lots of school kids who will nevertheless try and do just that. They will play the game through to completion, they'll inevitably draw or lose, and then most of them will want to try and have another go at it. Unfortunately, I have to move the guided tours on then at that moment, really. Uh, so, yeah, we, we could play a lot of games of noughts and crosses if we just left them to it. The grid is just numbered one to nine, and you just select the appropriate number, depending on where you want to go. So here, um, I'd better block him off, so that's number eight down there. So, away we go. It could take a while. It could, yeah. When I first started doing these, these guided tours, uh, actually using the Elliot and turning it on and so on, um, I was a bit concerned at first that this would be a bit slow and the kids would lose interest and they'd run off and go and play on the snares instead. Um, but actually, no, they find it quite entertaining. Um, they do immediately engage with it, especially the younger kids as well. And in fact, you know, going right up to teenagers who we'd expect to be a bit a bit more surly, a bit more grumpy about the whole thing. But, um, but no, um, it's a surprisingly engaging uh, little bit of software, this. And yeah, as I mentioned, lots of people will try and beat the computer and inevitably fail. So I'll make one last move. We'll go in the top corner and then we might uh, try another program on it, I think. <laughs> Firstly, I need to reset the machine. So we'll stop this simulation going here. Fiddle with the switches a little. It's relatively straightforward. It's just switching it. Previously, we have all of these ones up and these two down. To change it into a mode where we can read new tape, we're just switching it around. And that's relatively simple. It's a good thing as well because I can just say to the kids, you get in touch, you press that switch for me, you do this and that, because it's quite straightforward. So that's always nice, uh, letting them get hands on with it. So what we then need to do is pick a new program. So I think we'll, yeah, we'll go for this one. There we are. So we start off with the blank bit and then we get to the actual code at the end there. So what we're gonna do is put it through there. Unwrap it. 
Yeah, we've got a bit of a twirl going on here. I did once have a tape that got so twisted and tangled that we couldn't uh, run it through the little motor we've got here to wind it back up again. And uh, a colleague and I literally had to spend about an hour just undoing each little crease in the tape so we could get it wrapped back up again. And um, it's safe to say we haven't used that tape since. Right, now we should be a bit safer. So there we are. So reset the machine, this light should come on. There we are. So we've got the red lamp that's appeared there, which means we're all ready to go. I press read. Um, and as soon as this tape is finished running through, the new program will launch on VDU there. So this is exactly the same in principle as plugging in a USB stick, plugging in a CD. It's just a way of reading new programs from, from a storage medium. So it gets to the end and the new program starts just beneath uh, the end of Noughts and Crosses there. So this one, as we can see, is the countdown numbers game solver. We've moved away from Noughts and Crosses. We're into a bit more complicated mathematics now. So I can just pick uh, six numbers, give it a target. It will compute those numbers to try and hit the target just as in the countdown numbers game. So let's pick something at random. Uh, and it's going to try and get 937. There we are. So now it's going to try and work out how to do it. It can't do it using just one number or two. What's going to happen now is the beeping that we've got here, the noise which sounds like the machine is horrendously broken, is in fact fine. This is just the noise that the machine makes when it's computing. Same as just any old strange beeps you might get from your computer when it's working something out. So, but the problem with this machine is that because it's from 1966, it's not quite as powerful as something we'd have today. It takes a long time to crunch these numbers. So. Uh, if I've given it something quite difficult, it can't do it using, using four of the numbers. It's trying to do it with five now, and it gets longer and longer the more of those numbers it has to use. So it, if it can't do it with five, it will try and do it with six, and that could take, that could take anything up to two or three minutes, I think, for it to work out the, uh, the calculation. So where's the beeping coming from? Is that literally... The beeping the... is it's just the, the speaker on the back. It does oh, have so audio capacity, but it's, it's just, yeah, it's kind of like the beeps you get on a motherboard. It's, just to signify that the machine is currently it's functioning. It's tr trying to crunch those numbers. It doesn't like it, this one is too hard. What we'll do instead is we will stop that program running. I need to reset it now because I need to put it back in the mode to read the program that's already in there rather than running from a new tape. So we'll switch it around again. And the countdown program starts again. I'll give it something easy this time. I'll give it some nice big even numbers. Five, 10, two, six, three, and 50. And it's got to try and get um, 480. That seems like a nice round set of numbers for it to try and work out. So this time, hopefully it's gonna manage it for us. <laughs> there we go, it's done it. It's worked out how to do that 10 times 50 minus two, so 10 times 48 equals 480, there you go. So that one was a bit simpler that time. I should have given it something a bit easier to work out first time round. But you did get to see just how hard this machine finds it to do numbers that modern computers would just do instantaneously. Um, so that's one of the more interesting kind of mathematical programs that we have it doing. Um, but I think we'll run one more and we'll get it to do something fun again. This one's going to come out. I need to wrap it up, of course. So put it in here. Turn this on, and away we go. I haven't got a paper cut yet from this. One day I probably will. And there we are, that's that one all sorted out for us. So I will leave that there, clear it up properly in a moment, and we'll put one last tape in to line up the tape again. Change it back into the mode where it's reading programs instead of reading from memory. The red lamp comes on and away we go. And once again, it will launch straight into the program as soon as this is done. This time it's not going to appear on the monitor. It's a slightly different form of output this time round. We'll find out in just a moment. And there we are. That whole punch tape is just used to make it play the entertainer. Um, so yeah, we like to change from the serious programs that kind of crunch numbers, show kids how 
the computer is doing some serious mathematics and so on, give them an idea of what it might have done in its proper function uh, when it was in use in the 60s and 70s. But then we also like to show them through kind of fun music and uh, through little games and so on, um, give them an idea of how engaging this sort of stuff can be. So there we are, that's the Elliott 903. Moved to Bletchley Park here in early 1944 and uh, came into action pretty soon thereafter.